and now the latest across the wide world of tropics. Tropic Weather Bulletin for May the 23rd. Well, across the world of tropics tonight, we only have one subtropical cyclone active across the world, and that is subtropical storm Anna in the Atlantic Basin near Bermuda. Not much else is active around the world, although we do have some areas of interest, specifically in the Western Pacific and Northern Indian Ocean. It's day 143 of the year, and so far we've had 25 storms. We average 92 a year. It's day 9 until uh, hurricane season in the Atlantic Basin, and subtropical storm Anna has formed today, and uh, unfortunately, the Atlantic somehow found a way to start early again. Let's hope this trend stops next year, but we do have Anna. It's northeast of Bermuda. Going to be dying out fairly soon here. Uh, not going to be a huge threat to Bermuda. I know there were some tropical storm watches in effect uh, before uh, Anna was named, and those have since been discontinued. It's day 9 of hurricane season in the eastern Pacific, and no areas of interest are active, although models are showing some potential activity in the next week or two, so we do need to keep an eye on the eastern Pacific in the next week or two. In the western Pacific, it's a different story. We have two areas of interest. One is 30%, which we've marked east of the Mariana Islands, and a 40% area of interest in the South China Sea, all for potential tropical cyclone formation, so we do need to keep an eye on these. And our most pressing matter here in the Northern Indian Ocean, Invest 93B, we're giving it 90%, 80% within the next two days of formation. And this is potentially going to be a significant tropical cyclone for Bangladesh and India. So we do need to keep an eye on 93B. Here's the current satellite imagery of the Atlantic Basin tonight. A bit different than we're, than we're used to, but anyways, we are looking at true color and infrared imagery here. You can see subtropical storm Anna, northeast of Bermuda there. It is quite tiny, and it is going to be dying off fairly soon. We've got that large frontal system to the southeast of subtropical storm Anna, and you can see there in Texas that onshore flow, that uh, somewhere in that is what was Invest 91L, which is now all lost all chances of tropical cyclone formation. In the eastern Pacific, we've got general thunderstorm activity as you get towards the equator. Nothing really too concerning here, but like I, I did say earlier, we do have the potential for uh, some tropical cyclone activity within the next uh, few weeks, as models are showing some potential tropical cyclones take place in the eastern pacific in the western pacific the sun is coming up and you can see over there towards the eastern east of the mariana islands more southeast at this point you've got general thunderstorm activity uh generally south of there as well uh not much active in the south china sea earlier or, or right now as you can see just maybe some thunderstorms just sitting around there but we do have those chances for potential tropical cyclone formation. And finally, here's the northern Indian Ocean. You can see the disturbed weather in the Bay of Bengal, where Invest 93B is. Waters are very warm where 93B is, and we will certainly keep you updated on what Invest 93B does. The current sea surface temperatures across the world in the eastern Pacific, it's piping hot off the coast of Mexico. We're talking maybe 30 to 31 degrees Celsius waters there. In the Atlantic, it is warming up. We've got uh, generally 29, maybe 30 degrees Celsius waters in the Western Caribbean. Elsewhere, you've got general 27, 28, maybe 29 degrees Celsius waters. I know we've got 29 degrees Celsius waters in the jet stream. Where Anna is, you're talking, you know, 25, 26, 27 degree waters. But as it continues its track northeast, it's going to get into cooler waters and degenerate back to an extra tropical low. In the Indian Ocean and the Arabian Sea, it is cooling off. Uh, quite significantly uh, than what it was a few uh, about a week or two ago but in the Bay of Bengal it's a completely different story we've got water temperatures 30 to 31 with isolated pockets of 32 degrees Celsius I don't think 93b is going to be within those pockets of 90 uh, or sorry 32 degrees Celsius but it's definitely going to have 30 
31 degrees Celsius waters to work with, and with the conditions that the models are depicting, this storm will have very favorable conditions, you know, low wind shear, uh, plenty of moist air. In the Western Pacific, uh, it's quite warm, 30 degrees Celsius in the South China Sea, and generally 29 to 30 degrees Celsius in the open Western Pacific. In the Southern Hemisphere, uh, we've got general warm waters conducted for tropical cyclone development, although really the atmospheric conditions are not very favorable around this time of year, but we do still tend to see late season uh, activity in the Southern Hemisphere. I know we did just have Invest 91S uh, recently in the Southwest Indian Ocean, which is now gone. Sea surface temperatures anomalies now. We uh, have that cool hatch in the Pacific Ocean that indicates that uh, potential La Nina, and I think we're coming off of that La Nina, um, not really looking towards a, an El Nino this year, which is, uh, you know, ho hoping for something like that to calm down the Atlantic, although an El Nino would mean a more active Eastern Pacific, Central Pacific, and Western Pacific. So either way you look at it, we've still got uh, plenty of disturbed weather to deal with, whether we've got a La Nina or El Nino. I think we're in a neutral phase right now for La Nina. In the Atlantic Ocean, majority of the basin, it is above average. We are seeing some below average uh, waters towards the northern Gulf of Mexico and into the subtropics of the Atlantic. But you can see the Gulf Stream going straight up there into the subtropics. Just very warm. And then the Indian Ocean, we're going to point that out in the Bay of Bengal. Extremely uh, warm there. Uh, much above average to where it should be. In the Arabian Sea, we've actually got a cool pool of below average temperatures uh kind of where uh tau te tracked about a week ago already now to on this day in on may 23rd 1951 hurricane abel in the atlantic was coming off its peak it would be turning extra tropical i believe on the 24th or 25th and it, that was the only thing active on this day in 1951. I know in 1948, we did have a tropical depression forming. Uh, um, it was right off the northern coast of Haiti in the Atlantic Basin. And um, that's about all that I know. There was probably more. I, I think there was also um, the 2001 India cyclone in the Arabian Sea. Uh, quite a deadly storm that was in 2001. Here's our uh, naming lists. Unfortunately, we did have to use Anna, but let's hope we don't see Bill or Claudette for a while. In the Eastern Pacific, we're looking for Blanca or Carlos. In the Central Pacific, we're still waiting on Hone, followed by Iona. In the Western Pacific, we're waiting on Choi Wan, followed by Koguma. In the Northern Indian Ocean, if 93B does do what models are depicting, it would get the name Yas, followed by Gulab. In the Australian region, we're looking out for Patty, followed by Ruby. And in the Southwest Indian Ocean, we're looking for Kanga, followed by Luzi. And in the South Pacific, we're looking for Cody, followed by Dobie. Thank you so much for watching this Tropic Weather Bulletin, and we'll have another one tomorrow night.